let's hear from Sean McVay talking about the double punt, and then we'll talk more about what happened or didn't happen or what should have happened on that play. My brain doesn't have the, uh, I don't have the brain power to be able to explain it, but basically what happened was because he kicked it still behind the line of scrimmage, they reviewed it in New York. They said his foot was still on the line, so he wasn't totally over the line of scrimmage. So they said he can do that. I said, you can kick the ball twice, huh? Uh, you know, I guess you learn something every night. Um, I'm confused <laughs> about something. Okay, now look, look. Here's the thing. They reviewed it in New York. Why'd they review it in New York? It wasn't an instance where you'd have an automatic review. He's past the line of scrimmage, Peter, when he kicks that ball. And they can go yeah. Baghdad Bob on me all they want on Twitter and say, oh, it's a legitimate play because he was behind the line of scrimmage. He was not behind the line of scrimmage on the second kick. And, and it, why would they be reviewing it in New York? I could see and, – and look – I, if I knew at some point what the limits were of the replay assistant helping this year, I'd forgotten. And I'm going to have to look it up again and see if this was a legitimate instance for the replay assistant to help out. But New York should not be reviewing that play unless Sean McVay throws a red flag. And he didn't. And I think if he had, they would have seen, watch it here, scoops it up, hell of an athletic play. And and there, there's the, the line is behind his back foot. People think because the the official was there, see how the official kind of got his legs spread? They think the official's left foot is the line of scrimmage. It's not. The line of scrimmage is between his legs. The, the left leg there, when Michael Dixon kicks the ball, is beyond the line of scrimmage. So we finally hear from the league on a controversial officiating call this year, and they're trying to tell us 2 plus 2 is 5 because they're trying to tell us that that play is happening behind the line of scrimmage. It's not. Yeah. And when I saw this, Mike, first of all, I didn't know the rule. And it was hilarious because it's the first time that I've heard that Mike Pereira has sort of edited himself after the fact. And, and you know, here's a guy who is, who is, you know, to me, as expert as anybody I've ever heard about the rules. And this was, in fact, an incredibly confusing play. And I never knew that you could punt the ball twice if you were behind the line of scrimmage. I never knew that. Now, when the heck has it ever come up that you would have to know that? But I agree with you. I mean, to me, I don't know how you can justify that play being either at the line of scrimmage or behind the line of scrimmage. It did not look that way to me. And, and uh, you know, Pereira was confused initially because he thought you can't have two punts just like you can't have two forward passes. Once the first one gets batted back and caught by the quarterback or someone else, that's it. You can't do it again. But the, the way the rules were written, and this is weird, Peter, you can have two punts as long as they both happen behind the line of scrimmage. I'm having a hard time envisioning a set of circumstances where – the ball gets punted once, somehow makes it beyond the line of scrimmage, then somehow comes back behind the line of scrimmage and gets punted again. That's not permitted. But as long as it never crosses the line of scrimmage, it can be punted twice. I just It's odd to me that they would account for the possibility of that ball crossing the line of scrimmage and then somehow being back behind it and being punted again. But that's the rule. It can be punted twice as long as... It never crosses the line of scrimmage and comes back. And as long as the punter is behind the line of scrimmage for both punts. But that's the flaw here. And that's where McVay should have thrown the red flag. If they would have sent it to New York for a full-blown replay review, they would have seen that Michael Dixon was beyond the line of scrimmage. Full body, everything. Just like with a quarterback throwing the ball, everything's got to be past the line of scrimmage. Everything was past the line of scrimmage. I'll say this about the play itself. I wonder if we could just run it one more time and we could show Michael Dixon picking up the ball because he basically picked up that ball with one hand, a spinning football. Somehow, some way, he picked that ball up with one hand. Look at that. How is that possible that you picked up a spinning ball with one hand? And after the game... Somebody asked him about that, and he said, basically, that goes back to Australian rules football, where, which he played, obviously, before coming over to the U.S. The Seahawks did a great scouting job, found him. Now, watch this. 
He picked the ball up. It was spinning and he picked it up with one hand. It was unbelievable. And then he punted it for 69 yards. Will somebody tell me if there has been a better individual play on special teams by one player in NFL history ever? I want you to tell me. Think of a think of a play ever in NFL history that is a better play than that. It, it, and look, Mike, it's one of those things you know and I know that he was over the line when he kicked it. But, you know, whatever, it, it, it's going to go down in history as a 69-yard punt. And I'm just saying the three things that happened, the block punt, the pr- presence of mind to find the ball, picking it up with one hand, and then punting it, for 69 yards is just, I just, I'm, I'm incredulous. And if the Rams had lost that game, that play would have loomed so much larger over today's discussion. The league got lucky right. that the Rams won that game, or there would be a lot more scrutiny applied to it. And again, just to, just to make this point, I've been very critical of the fact that the NFL has kept its head in the sand through all of the officiating controversies this year. They say nothing. I think their attitude has been, just let it go. It'll die down. We're not going to give any fuel to it by addressing it. They popped that tweet up last night just saying, without even addressing the possibility that maybe he was close to the line, maybe there was part of his body that was somehow not over the line. To say in conclusory fashion... The punter kicks the ball again from behind the line of scrimmage is a flat-out falsehood, inaccuracy, misrepresentation, lie. Whatever word you want to apply, it's not right. So silence, I think, Peter, is better than than trying to make us believe something that our eyes would contradict. So uh, the NFL better get this right because something's going to happen in a big game. It's going to turn the outcome of a game, and they're going to have a mess on their hands. And I'm surprised they haven't had. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.